Hello, welcome to this overview of the performance requirements for the Manufacturing, Agricultural, and Industrial, or MAI, Alternate Compliance Option under the Energized Denver Ordinance. My name is Daniel Rayner, and I am the Industrial Administrator for Denver's Office of Climate Action, Sustainability, and Resiliency. The Energized Denver Ordinance is comprised of three components, benchmarking requirements, performance requirements, and electrification updates to the building code. Today, I'll be focusing on the performance requirements. This graphic illustrates the MAI alternate compliance option. I will dive into the specifics in a moment, but I have a few initial key takeaways. First, there are a lot of options here, so there is flexibility for most MAI buildings. However, MAI buildings must choose just one pathway and one corresponding metric. I will also note that these are all 2030 goals. So 2026 is your interim target year where you should make 50% progress towards your 2030 goal. This is different from the commercial building program, which has two interim target years in 2025 and 2027. With that said, let's dive into the details of these compliance options. So as I mentioned, MAI buildings must choose to pursue one of two compliance pathway options. The performance pathway on the right is very similar to the performance requirements for commercial buildings in the sense that your compliance is measured by meeting a specific performance metric as demonstrated in your annual benchmarking reports. This pathway is a good option for buildings that have already made upgrades or already have a plan in place. Another benefit is that submitting the alternate compliance option application and annual benchmarking are the only reporting requirements for this pathway. On the other hand, on the left, compliance with the prescriptive pathway is measured by receiving an energy audit, compiling and executing an action plan, and completing your annual benchmarking and numerous reporting requirements along the way. This pathway is something that came out of the stakeholder engagement process when designing this program. It offers a step-by-step -step process for buildings who haven't yet made upgrades to their buildings. Please reach out to me if you're interested in pursuing this pathway. Now that we've discussed the two pathways, let's dive into the corresponding metrics for each, starting with the performance pathway metrics. The first performance metric is a 30% energy use intensity or EUI reduction as compared to your baseline year. EUI is measured in total KBTUs of energy consumed in a total year divided by the square footage of the building. This is the default compliance option for buildings that do not apply to the MAI alternate compliance option. One note on baseline years. The default baseline year for this metric and for all metrics is calendar year 2022. However, MAI buildings may choose a baseline year as early as 2018 if they want to get credit for energies reductions that they've already achieved since then. The second performance metric is a 30% production efficiency improvement. This is very similar to the 30% EUI reduction metric, except that here, uh, your performance is measured in total KBTUs of energy per year, but divided by a custom metric, such as the number of widgets manufactured in a year. This metric is another big thing that came out of the stakeholder engagement process because some manufacturers expect to significantly ramp up their production in the coming years. It's up to the building owner to propose the custom production efficiency metric to CASR. I will go into the details, but here are some examples of production efficiency metrics. These metrics can be as specific as possible to the operations conducted in your building. So the, oper the uh, options are theoretically endless. I also want to note that the custom metric or widget must be a standard product. Therefore, this efficiency metric might not be a viable option if you're a manufacturer that produces non-standard custom products for all your different customers. If you do choose to pursue a custom production efficiency metric, you must include that metric in your Energy Star Portfolio Manager account beginning in at least your chosen baseline year. On our website, I've developed a guide for entering custom metrics into your account. Please do reach out to our help desk if you need 
uh, assistance with benchmarking. The third performance metric is a 30 EUI target. This is a good option for buildings that already have a really low EUI. Uh, as a general rule of thumb, if your EUI is at a 42 or below, this might be a good option for you. The fourth performance metric is a 75 EPA Plant Energy Performance Indicator or EPI score target. EPIs were developed by the EPA for very specific manufacturing plant types, and they're similar to Energy Star scores just for certain manufacturing plants. I'll note that the higher the EPI score, the more efficient your plant is. There are 20 EPI scores currently, more may be added over time, um, and this is the selection of some of those 20 scores that are currently available. If you believe your building is eligible for an EPI score, please do reach out to me. Lastly, we've developed a few specific performance metrics for new MAI buildings listed here. The definition of a new MAI building is a building that received its certificate of occupancy after November 22nd, 2021, and meets the definition of a covered MAI building. So a few examples of what could be considered a new MAI building include new constructions, uh, an existing commercial building, so not MAI, that undergoes significant redevelopment and triggers new building code requirements, and which is subsequently reclassified as an MAI building. Or a non-MAI building that achieved its 2030 target already, and then is subsequently reclassified as an MAI building, possibly due to a change in occupancy or tenants. If you believe your building meets the definition of a new MAI building, um, or if you are planning to build a new MAI building or have a new MAI tenant, please reach out to me as soon as possible. Next, let's discuss the prescriptive pathway metrics. The first prescriptive pathway metric is an estimated 30% EUI reduction. This is very similar to the performance metric the difference here is how we assess compliance. Uh, here you would receive an ASHRAE level two energy audit and create an action plan based on the recommendations from that audit. Um, and the action plan will outline the upgrades you'll make, which will add up to an estimated 30% EUI reduction. Similarly, the second prescriptive pathway metric is an estimated 30% production efficiency improvement. So as I mentioned, the prescriptive pathway requires you to receive an ASHRAE level two energy audit. These are the minimum requirements for that audit. Um, you can find much more detail on this in our technical guidance. I'd encourage you to check that out. After receiving an energy audit, the next step for the prescriptive pathway is to come up with an action plan. The action plan must include information on the energy upgrades that you've already made in your building since 2019, if any, the upgrades you plan to make to achieve your interim and final targets, the estimated savings associated with each upgrade that you're planning, an estimation of when you're going to make those upgrades, and a written acknowledgement of the reporting deadlines for the prescriptive pathway. So these are the reporting requirements for the prescriptive pathway. They include submission of an energy audit and action plan, submission of an interim and final implementation report after the two target years, submission of an evaluation, monitoring, and verification report, and a possible corrective action plan if your actual savings achieved are less than 20%. Please check out our website for more details on these reporting requirements The next aspect I'm going to discuss are the supplemental credits. First is the renewables credit, which is identical to the renewables credit for commercial buildings. Solar or wind power generation on or offsite will be credited to the building's total energy use before performance targets are evaluated. I'll note that offsite solar has to be within the Colorado PUC territory. I'll also note that there's no limit to the amount of long-term installations or contracts that you can get credit for. Second is the fossil fuel reduction credit. 
Simply stated, if an MAI building reduces its fossil fuel consumption between its baseline and performance evaluation year, it will receive the fossil fuel reduction credit. So this is to incentivize you to use your gas more efficiently or to electrify your processes if possible. The credit will be automatically assessed and applied to eligible MAI buildings. The maximum possible credit is 10% and will be applied to your building's 2030 target. You may be wondering how to officially choose your compliance options once you've thought this through. You'll do this by applying to the MAI alternate compliance option, which is available on the MAI webpage. If you do not apply by December 1st of 2024, your building will be assigned to the default 30% site UI reduction target as compared to your 2022 baseline. However, if you do submit this uh, application after December 1st, we will still consider it. The last thing I wanna mention here are timeline adjustments. Just like every other commercial building, MAI buildings are eligible for timeline adjustments. So for example, if you have a relatively new boiler and you want to plan ahead for its replacement, you can request a timeline adjustment so that your performance will be evaluated after you replace the boiler at the end of its system life. There's plenty of other examples for why you might request a timeline adjustment, but that's a common one. So like the prescriptive pathway, timeline adjustments also require you to submit an ASHRAE Level 2 energy audit with your timeline adjustment application. The minimum requirements for each aspect of this timeline adjustment application are also outlined in our technical guidance, so please do check that out. So in summary, if you have any questions, please reach out. We're here to help. Um, our help desk is available for any benchmarking or performance requirements questions you might have. Um, if you'd like to strategize your compliance plan or talk through your options, I'm always happy to do so. Please just send me an email. Thank you very much and have a great day.